Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, here in this video, I'm about to show you how to get your car back on the road if you've driven through a mud puddle and your engine has instantly stopped. Hopefully you weren't going that fast so we don't have the same situation we ended up with in this particular vehicle that I'm about to work on, but this information will work for any vehicle, that I promise you. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Um, I'm about to deliver some news on this here 2016 back here. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and you're watching the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos most of all, letting them play from front to back when you find the spot of the video you're looking for. That's helpful the most. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them, be the first to you. So this 2017 Impala with the V6 in it got towed into the shop last night. The guy's complaining that he turns the key, here's a click. Just to make sure it wasn't the battery, I pulled the battery cover and I'm gonna hook up the jump box and see if it still clicks and then we'll go through checks. So we got the jump box hooked up. We're gonna check it out, see what happens. Put the key in the ignition. Huh, sounds like a starter, at least that would be our first thoughts. The next thing we need to do is we need to raise the vehicle up and double check and make sure our engine spins free. This vehicle has 61,000 miles on it, so we shouldn't have a locked engine. So I've removed two pushies from here and I've got my ratchet right on the center of the harmonic balancer. We're gonna give this thing a tug and see if it... Uh-oh. That's not good, folks. That's not good at all. But we still need to do more inspections before we determine that the timing chain broke or the engine locked up for some weird reason at 61,000 miles. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so there's only so many things that we can check before we start dismantling serious stuff. The first thing that we want to do is we want to take all our screws out of our air filter and because I haven't talked to this guy yet or at least he didn't say anything he just said it won't start it's making a clicking noise I assumed it was a starter but now we know it's much worse than that I still want to check over the rest of the engine and make sure that we don't have problems that we can check easily before we just diagnose the starter and say hey it needs a starter or say hey the timing chains dropped in this thing or the valve dropped inside the motor at 61,000 miles would be ridiculous so we're going to disassemble the air box and we're going to pull out the air filter and see what's happening here we want to make sure that we take a look underneath there because there's one other possibility oh yeah yeah this air filter weighs like five pounds this is ridiculous it is saturated with wa water i mean just saturated and we can see some water residue down in there so this guy is probably super, super lucky. More than likely, his engine is what's called hydrolocked. What happened is he ran through a water puddle or mud puddle and water went straight up into the intake. Then that fills up the cylinders and then when the piston tries to go up, it can't go up any further. So now in this situation, we're gonna remove all six spark plugs and this is sweet because I haven't done that yet. So we're going to remove these spark plugs and you're going to literally be able to see this water shoot out of there. And we're going to see if we can get this engine running again and bring it back to life. Luckily, this just came in yesterday, so I doubt we'll have very many problems. I don't think we have to worry about rust because oil drops down in there, etc., etc. So if we get the water out quick, we'll be good to go. Just to make sure I'm cautious, I'm going to go ahead and pull oil out of it and I'm gonna change the oil filter on it. I don't think water would get into the oil, but you can never be too careful. So we're gonna do that first. Now we're gonna pull these spark plugs out. On this Impala, I had to actually pull the intake up before I could pull out the spark plugs. So I'm just about to get that removed and we're gonna have a very big surprise pretty soon. Oh! I swear I'm not making this up. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to do that. Yeah. 
That's a real problem. Well, well, I'd say that's a problem. I don't know for sure, but what do you guys think? <laughs> okay, so now I've got my spark plugs out. I can inspect them. As far as temperature wise, they look great because they're white. The porcelain's not all broken. The tips are still there, but we need to blow these out really well. They smell like uh, water, gas, dirty pool water, nasty booty. And they are nasty and they're covered with water. So we can reuse these plugs. We just need to make sure that the gaps are correct and that we get all the water blown out from inside them and they should just work just fine. So no sense in paying $17 a plug for these GM plugs. At least maybe that's whatever they cost, $7, how much ever, I don't know. Now I'm gonna suck this water out of these intakes with my Mighty Vec inserter and we'll just squirt that water out. Okay, so I took my larger Mighty Vac so I could get down in the cylinders more and blew out the cylinders pretty well. Blow out the intakes. Put as much of that water out of there as possible. Okay, so we've sucked all the water out of there. We're not gonna get every single molecule of water out of there. It's already been through your engine where water shouldn't be. But I wouldn't worry too much about it because if we get it out of there quickly, we're gonna avoid things like rust and stuff like that. The only other possibility and bad thing that could have happened is if this engine was running really fast when you went through that lake, it could have bent valves. We're gonna hope that that didn't happen, but the damage is already there, so it really doesn't matter at this point. We need to check and make sure that it's not damaged for good. Okay, so we need to roll the engine to a spot where there's not any water inside it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the engine until it turns with the spark plugs out. Now I'm trying clockwise right there, and that's not working. So now I'm gonna go counterclockwise and see if that works. All right, so now we're able to turn it counterclockwise, and I'm gonna give it two little turns. Now we're gonna to try to suck out more water and blow more water out of the cylinders. Check that out. That is full of water. Well, no matter what I did, I could not get it to unlock. I've moved it back and forth and it will only move a little bit. So there's something going on. Well, regretfully, I think it's locked up. I went back and forth with it just no quarto. So nine out of 10 times, you're not gonna have this situation. You're gonna be able to get that water out of there. But I think with the standing water on the inside of the lower intake, with the water on the inside of the intake, it took in a lot of water very quickly and immediately stopped the engine. It bent the valves or bent the piston, you know, something like that. So unfortunately, we weren't able to get him back on the road. But the good thing is he has insurance and your insurance would cover this if you have full coverage like he does. At least it should, I, I would assume. And that's what I told him to try to make him feel a little bit better. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. God bless. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the first to you, just like your boy Clay. Later, have a nice day.